Good afternoon. How, how's everybody? Um, isn't this a great time to be in Detroit? Come on. What, what do we think? I uh, have been in Detroit myself for well over 50 years, almost 60. Came to Detroit in 1958 with my dad, who was a UAW person. We moved into a neighborhood called Russell Woods. Anybody here from Russell Woods? We got one or two hands out here, not many. There's another one over here. Um, we had a good time. It was a good neighborhood. It was great. It was, in fact, that. We could walk to school. We walked to the stores on Dexter and Davison, Dexter and Fullerton many times. My mother would send me to the store to get bread. I could walk up to Dexter, across the street, Dexter and Fullerton, go to the store. If you go in that neighborhood today, it doesn't look like that. Uh, Dexter Davison, the Dexter Davison market is gone. All the shopping and dry cleaners and grocery stores and everything that was there on Dexter is now gone. We all can remember those kinds of neighborhoods in Detroit. And we remember the feeling we had when we either walked to school or we walked to the store to get the loaf of bread. The reality is we're not going to be able to bring back those neighborhoods exactly the way they were, but we can bring back the feeling. So when you want to know what we're trying to do with the Black Task Force, Mayor Duggan, and all of the things that we're doing here in Detroit, it's to bring back the feeling that we had about neighborhoods in Detroit. We continue to be a city of neighborhoods. We're down right now, but we're not completely out. And so what I want to talk a little bit about today in my 20 minutes, Linda covered a lot of the details, and thank you, Linda. By the way, uh, Linda Smith, you snap back. I mean, she's been talking about community organizing on the east side. Morningside, East Indies Village neighborhoods, and then with the role she played with the Detroit Task Force. Uh, we owe her another round of applause. <laughs> but Linda covered a lot of the details. I'm going to try to frame this very complicated issue called blight in Detroit uh, for you in about 20 minutes, uh, and then answer any questions if anybody uh, has any. We're in tough times in Detroit right now. We're under emergency management. We're in Chapter 9 bankruptcy, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what that really means, but we are the largest municipal city in the country that has ever gone into Chapter 9 bankruptcy. We've lost two-thirds of our population in the last 60 years. Our school system is on its third emergency manager, and we can't seem to get ahead of that game. People are trying to grab our art. People are trying to take our pensions, my pension. <laughs> People are trying to take and regionalize the water board. Uh, these are difficult times. And so, uh, as Luther said, I've served six mayors, starting with Coleman Young back in 1974. Uh, and in the 70s and 80s, he always started these kinds of speeches. And it's amazing that I find myself now, 40 years later, starting them the same way. That when he talked about Detroit, it reminded him of the Charles Dickens novel, A Tale of Two Cities. And for those who have read that, it starts out, it was the worst of times, it was the best of times. And so the, the worst of times are described by those things that I just mentioned. Bankruptcy uh, is not a good thing. Um, many of you all have come up to me, and I see many familiar faces uh, in the audience today, and said, Charlie, you know, uh, what about the jobs? And what about the grants that I used to get, CDGB? And what about CB patrol and those kinds of things? The reality is that those days are gone, that the city is bankrupt, that we are broke, and that the pot of money that they're fighting over now in bankruptcy court with Judge Rose will not get larger, it will get smaller. 
And so the money we have had in the past to run the city of Detroit and to provide the services that you have paid your taxes for and that you deserve is a much smaller pot. And it's going to get smaller. That any extra money that happens to be on the table, and believe me, there's not very much, you have bondholders, retirees and pension funds, and vendors and the like saying, I want that money because it's owed to me. So Judge Rhodes has the very difficult task of taking this prescribed pot of money and divvying it up between all of those that are asking for it. So even if we had five to ten million dollars extra in the pot, the bondholders, retirees, pension funds would file a motion in court and grab that and say, that's my money, Judge, and I want that. So from a retiree standpoint, we're not looking at the option of even keeping what we have coming now. Or if we reject it, it might get a little better. Our two options are worse and more worse. And that's the same thing for the city. So I'm not trying to scare anybody here, but I am trying to frame this picture that we're in some very, very difficult times here. And as we come out of this bankruptcy, which we will later this year, we're going to have even less to work with as we fight this thing called blight, as we fight to bring back the feeling we have about Detroit and neighborhoods. So it's going to take an effort uh, of all of us in the community and every individual and organization and faith-based group to bring this back. But the city will no longer be in the position being the primary driver of that. Now having said that, and it being the worst of times, it's the best of times in Detroit. Look at all of the things that we have going on for us here in Detroit. Uh, Dan Gilbert and Linda's been working with him and Glenda Price uh, in downtown has spent hundreds of millions of dollars buying up 50 properties and literally turning downtown around. When you walk around downtown now, Campus Marshes, the riverfront, uh, and some of the things through here, five years ago you would never have thought that you would see those kinds of things in downtown. Just absolutely exciting things happening. Campus Marshes, Midtown with Sue Mosley, the things that she's doing. Who would have ever thought that there's a waiting list for housing uh, in Midtown? They don't have enough housing units uh, in Midtown people wanting to be a part of that rebirth. We've had uh, outstanding events, the Grand Prix, the International Jazz Festival coming again uh, this fall, the Downtown Hoedown last week, uh, the Movement Festival, uh, the Free Press Marathon, uh, our sports teams. Now, you know, they tend to tease us a little bit, uh, the Red Wings and the Tigers and the Lions, um, but they're all downtown. They're exciting to go see and to watch, and maybe one day we'll get a Super Bowl or uh, Stanley Cup or something like that again. But it's all a part of the excitement and the things that are going on in Detroit that says that it's the best of times, quite frankly, to be in Detroit. So as Detroiters, with that scenario, what do we do? Where do we go? What do we do next? Well, in November of last year, Detroiters elected a new mayor, Mike Duggan. And as Luther said, I've had the pleasure of working for six mayors, and it's kind of ironic, worked for Coleman Young, who was the first African-American mayor for the city of Detroit, and now Mike Duggan, who's the first white mayor in 40 years in the city of Detroit. Two extremes, uh, but two very similar times and two very similar kinds of leaders. Coleman Young exuded confidence, a change, a new approach to what the city was doing, and so is Mike Duggan. Uh, this guy is a doer. I have the pleasure of knowing him for 30 years, certainly for working with him now, um, and he's going to do the best that he can with what we have. He campaigned on the slogan, every neighborhood has a future. Uh, and we have been focusing on that with every hour of the day for the first six months. 
So the Detroiters have responded to that. We're excited about it. We believe in him. Um, as we were on the campaign trail last year, he went to over 200 basements, living rooms, literally on gas stations, barbershops, talking in the neighborhoods, talking to the people in terms of what are your concerns, what are your needs, where do you want the city to go from here. So the big concerns that came up, number one was blight, which is what we've been talking about today. People were concerned about crime. People were concerned about the school. People were concerned about their lights being out. People were concerned about waiting for the buses too long. So we looked at that and said, how do we begin to attack all of those problems with the meager resources we had? Blight was necessary. We knew we had to do it. You cannot go. Uh, into over 90% of the neighborhoods in this town and not see evidence of blight. As it was described earlier by the gentleman, blight is basically a home that is unoccupied and abandoned and just quite frankly doesn't look very good. We've got that unfortunately in way too many neighborhoods uh, in uh, our city. So we knew we had to attack that. The other piece that Mike Duggan said is let's improve city services where we can and when we can, so that with the meager resources we have, people can begin to feel good again.